Uh, hello and welcome to the story of John, John Mitchum. Is it Mitchum or Mitchell? Yeah. Whatever you want, really. Yeah, you can spell, everyone's name gets spelled slightly different throughout the lives. But what look, uh, yeah, um, for the viewers who don't know John, he's a, a drummer in the Ice Cream Robots in, in, in our band that you probably listen to on this channel, yeah? He's been the drummer. I have, um, I've done drum duties. Drum duties, and he's done drum duties uh, since what, what age? Uh, when I first played drums, I was probably 11. 11 years of age, what what made you get into drums? Uh, yeah, I think it was the Bridge Over Troubled Water album, Simon and Garfunkel, that was being played in the house all the time. But they, I, oh, we'll stop there, have they got drums? Oh yes, Cecilia, do you mean? No, well that was Cecilia. hand clapping, please. Yeah. Breaking yeah. yeah, that was all hand claps and leg slaps and echo. Well, what's your favorite? I mean, the, the, it's very acoustic. That wasn't. That? I thought it was all acoustic. It wasn't mainly. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. The book. There was some really good drumming in it. Bridge over the troubled water. That was Hal Blaine, the great session musician. What's his name? Hal Blaine. Uh, Hal. Not only that snare drum you hear, that loud echoey bang. It was done outside a lift in a hallway, and <laughs> when they were doing one of the takes, the lift came up to that floor. And the door opened just as he hit the snare drum and the bloke in the left like <laughs> decapitated himself <laughs> with shock. Apparently he jumped a lot. What's that? Was so, someone, committed, someone committed suicide? On no. Uh, that was just me saying that he decapitated himself. He just jumped with fright. Don't be using the word decapitation freely, John, uh, with, with the ongoing saga. The ongoing sagas. <laughs> the world. Yes. You, you can't mention anything these days but, without an ongoing saga yeah. being involved. So really, yeah, I've been a bit wokey in it. Wokey. wokey. Is it wokey? You've got to be careful what oh, you I'm say. I'm woke now. He's awoke. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, moving on swiftly. So, 11 years of age, yeah? Yeah, so I was playing drums. I was using wooden rulers. Ding, 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 ding. Wooden the rulers. On yeah. the edge of a cardboard box. That was my drum kit. You get different sounds out of a cardboard box. And how did you practice just, like, listening to music? with Just hit along to the record. Yeah. Everything. The singing, the guitar, the bass. Have you met any famous drummers in your, in your time? Like, who was, your, who was your best one you ever met? Oh, there's loads. Uh, I've met all the usual suspects, John Bonham, Ian Pace. Stop there, John Bonham, yes. Led Zeppelin. I think we need to cover this. You have covered that. So how did you meet John Bennon? Bennon! 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 John Bonham! Bennon! 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 Yeah, apparently though, it's John Bonham, yeah. Johnny was, Bonham. Johnny Henry. Like most uh, drummers, it's like this a lot on again. It's your like, they, They've all got a mad streak in them, haven't they? Yeah, but you say, like, drummers are classed in the band well, as yeah. being a bit when, mad. When I saw them, you could see the, like, the mood of the room. Plant was going around, you know, he was standing up. Jimmy Page was sat in the corner. John Paul Jones had legged it to the pub. He was sat on the table on his own, neck in Heineken. <laughs> Chins John, of Heineken. John Bond, <laughs> it was just a Liverpool stadium, yeah. Yes. He was very hot, he was sweaty, because when I gave him a hug and said, you're a brilliant drummer, you, he was like, <clears throat> so... Yeah, Absolutely a shocked green, again. A green um, sweat top on, which was soggy. <laughs> but he gave me sticks. And we'll, we'll, we covered that thing. We covered that, yeah. yeah he actually got six pairs. Five pairs. Ludwigs. Were they Ludwig sticks? Six, yeah. Brand new in packets. Well, how many sticks would he get? I know mean, John Bond being that, obviously. Was he just cluttered with, like... Well, no, it was just a long flight case at the back of the stage and the road. He opened it and there were sticks and he just picked a load up. He probably gets replenished along the way. So you give you a bit of time a day, he wasn't up as yeah, well. Yeah, no, you no. Know, you get like famous people. And I don't. actually sat the wrong way around on his stool because the roadies yeah. was putting his kit away, all the stands had been taken down, but the stool was still there and the, and the, you know, the drum bits. It was nice. So I sort of, I could say I sat on John Bonham's drum kit, but backwards because the kit was behind me. I was watching the road, he fascinated as he put all the stands away. He says, oh, he says, you can have these. Because you said you were a drummer, up and coming drummer. Yeah, I said, I'm learning drums. And you're, I said, give me a hug. And said, you're a fantastic drummer. And I, I'd love some of your sticks, you know. Because sticks were expensive then. They were like three quid a pair. Um, and so how old was you then? 17. 17, 1970. That's when I was born. 29th of January. So I, I was born on the 17th, so I would have been what? 
Three, nine, twelve years. I would have been twelve days old when you watch on Bonham. Were you? Yeah, twelve days twelve old. Days. Yeah, oh, that would have been a bit loud for you. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> no. So what band then? So what was your first band? What can you remember? Um, let me think deeply about this. Well, you see a proper band. Yeah. Yeah, but well, you know you could drink and. Play drums, loads of bands like that. <laughs> yeah, but I was saying, what was it? You must have your first band. Mine was Sex Tribe with uh, Lee McShane. Oh, yeah, uh, I'm trying to think of the name. Sex um, Tribe, 80s. I, know, I can't remember the name. I can remember the members. The members? I think we had different names. Remember, you're a one. Oh, I think one was from the um, Hobbit books or something. Steer Pike. There's a band called Steer Pike. Steer Pike. That's Pike yeah. to do with. Yes. Was it really hippie then? Was it yeah, like it was a hippie era? Yeah. It was a band called Risk. It was obviously after the uh, board game. Risk. Risk. Risk, yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Are they, have you got any material on? on uh, is there anything on YouTube that people can sort of say, that, that's in drumming? The, the only YouTube then was when you put a shilling on the phone and held the speaker up to a, a cassette player and went, have a listen to this. <laughs> yeah. That's the, all it was. So, it, no. <laughs> Those were the days. I guess. Those weren't the days. <laughs> so anyway, they just, don't exist. I've got, a, I've got to dive into your mind. So eighteen, yeah. nineteen. Then did, was you was did you have any jobs or was you just into, like in a band or what was you doing? You say job. I was yeah. I was a drumist then. Well, that's what I'm going to say. The, the, did, these viewers don't know. Was, oh, no, so no. you're a, a full time professional drummer, yeah? Yeah. Percussionist, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Then you went on to store as a st- as a storeways or what? what, what? Storeways, storeways. No, what, what was the band you were, you went in and you were playing regular at Eric's? Oh, uh, stop out. The stop outs, yeah. Yeah, they're actually on YouTube, aren't they? Yeah, there's lots. Of stuff. What are they like? A rocky punky? Would you say what? New wave, more than anything. New wave, new wave eh? rock and roll. New wave rock and roll. Yeah. And was that when the time you were talking? Because I've got to remind you. Yeah. yeah. I used to bump into like characters such as like who was who was actually smoking loads of weed. Uh, Elvis Costello was it? No, it wasn't him. No, he, I never saw him smoke weed. No, no. What was no. his name? What's his proper name? Elvis Costello. No, um, Peter um, McNulty. No, it's, who's Peter McNulty? <laughs> it's not. That's what I'm saying. Well, I've got to ask this because it, it might be someone you know and I've never met. I think I'm trying to wear hell with it just off the cuff. What yeah. was McManus? That was it. Yeah, that was that was Elvis um, Costello's real, real name. name. Yeah. No, yeah, but I didn't know anything about him. The only thing I remember about him was uh, he was worried about his tuning before he went back on for an encore because his tune was all over the place. The tuners then were like a, a stroboscopic spin thing. So you were like the backstage of? Is yeah, it? we were the support band. Yeah, of of one of of, of gig. It's of one of his gigs. Yeah. yeah. You know what stop I mean? It's a stop, stop outs. Yeah, so and Elvis Costello. You know, and um, yeah. what's the st- story you told me about? Uh, is it Paul McCartney's brother John McCartney? Do you have a brother, brother John? I'm just totally lost with this one. Uh, I'm trying to it's find Michael. It. Tell us about Michael and how you met. Um, I've seen him a few times around car shows and things like that in the past and gigs. Uh, that particular event was Tranmere Festival, and we were supporting the Tommy Kitten. <laughs> right there. Yeah. You can lick my hole again. That that band. Oh, sorry. You can lick my hole again. <laughs> you can. Yeah, that they were our our main band. Twice we supported them. <laughs> in fact, we're the only local band around here to ever support a Tommy Kitten. What stop out? No, no, that was uh, Mother Goose. Oh, Mother Goose? Oh, the Geese, as we were known. The Geese. Did anybody ever watch the Mother Goose? Because apparently they had a big name in there. Uh, it's, they're going to get re- re- reviewed and uh, revived, it should we say, when my channel gets up and running. Fantastic. Because I've got lots of recordings. I'm, not many videos. Some of them are very odd videos because <laughs> we did some very odd gigs. So, what was your maddest gig? You know, people were so sort of like. Say, for instance, the Rolling Stones was that like when the Hells Angels all kicked off, remember? Oh, yeah. You uh, know, and uh, that was over in. I suppose uh, in that sort of year, uh, Watchfield Festival was 76. Uh, we called? supported East of Eden and uh, 
Steve Winwood's band. Uh, Strife were on the same gig and Gong were on the same gig as well. Gong? Yeah. yeah. And uh, had a few bands. It was good. Watch Phil Festival. It was hot as summer in 76. There was 40,000 people walking around in nothing because it was too hot. And we used to watch Concord every day fly right over the field because it must have took off further down, you know, and flew over us on its way to America. So you're talking like that was I was into hippies then was like Yeah, it was a great gig. I was doing a drum solo on stage. The band was called Juggernaut, by the way. We supported Strife. Everyone remembered that the band Strife. Anyway, there is a Strife Watchfield video that exists. It's in black and white or jittery colour. Yeah. Because it was done on video and the video is obviously Stress, tape yeah. stretched. But it was a good quality uh, yes. gig for you know for, for a surviving tape, I suppose. But that was the gig, and when I was doing my drum solo, uh, I was baking hot. I remember thinking, right in the middle of the solo, there was all these people dancing. There was about 45,000 there. A lot of people. 45,000 yeah. people naked as well, most of them. Well, some were, yeah, or well, hardly any clothes. Anyway, uh, this guy, completely bollocko, jumps on the stage and dances around the drum kit. <laughs> which was great until he tripped up over the monitor behind me. It was a loud crash. And then I just carried on doing the drum solo. And when I looked around, the roadies were going, come on, mate, off you go. And he jumped off the back. <laughs> so if you were there at that festival, what was it called? Yeah. The Watchfield. Well, no, Watchfield. It, yeah, but it was moved to, yeah, it was Watchfield. It was the, originally the Windsor Park Festival, but the police, in their wisdom, raided it and closed it down. So the following one was... Moved to Watchfield. Was well, that like the, you know, it's a, a, the years of... Uh, Ox Ox oh, look, it's 11, 11, 11. It's 11, 11 that's, already. That's an angel number. Google 11, 11 now. 11, 11. 11, 11. 11, 11. Prosperous, really, the prosperity. 11, 11. Yeah. That's great. Just, just pause there, yeah. Um, and it's actually 12.05 on this show. You know, we're 12 minutes at the moment, Jeff and John, the story of John. What are you doing, though? He's... He's into 11 11. He's got to give gratitude. Oh, to no, the I blinked. I shouldn't have blinked. Is that, is that you? Oh, no, now? I blinked. I shouldn't have blinked. It's all right now. Oh, no, it's 11 I 12. Blinked. Now. It's 11 I 12. It's all right. The angel's gone. He's just reminded that he, I'm you're right right now. he is there. He's in tune with the universe. Check out the angel numbers and Google them because it does help, you know, if you're into that sort of thing. Um, Right. Yeah, so anyway, um, just quickly talk about what was going on in the festival. What sort of drug usage was people into, like LSD? Oh, uh, cider mainly. <laughs> cider. <laughs> yes, you could get cider at a farm down the road for eighty pence a gallon. Oh, so right. we got four four gallons of cider. That was all the drugs we needed. How many pints in a gallon? Eight. Eight. So well, ten. I don't know. I I can't remember the the old Roman Catholic. Well, I thought it was 12, 12 pints in a gallon. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I think it was eight. Eight, eight, eight pints, yeah. Eight old imperial pints, folks. Oh, let me just Google that. See, see, see. Siri, how many pints are in a gallon? It's eight imperial pints. Hey, he's right. Boom. I remember. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Siri. Thank you for your help. Fantastic, he yeah. Didn't believe me. Yeah, he didn't believe me. I did, I did, I so, was, that, that was the drug usage. It was called pink... Cloudy cider. It's very good, actually. What was like proper, like you know? Oh, proper laxative. Yes, yeah. laxative. Yeah. Yes, proper laxative. Did you ever shit yourself on stage? No. No. No, never. Well, I, I enjoyed playing. Life. Like when I was doing the karaoke, the uh, I, I actually, you know, I was singing there. Uh, I think it was Suspicious Minds. With Suspicious Minds. I called the Suspicious Pies. You know, uh, yeah. and I, I remember, I, you know. Um, Having a bit of a dodgy stomach, and I went down to do an elder's pose, and uh, caught in a trap, and it, it just come out of me, you know, <laughs> bowel sorts of because yeah. I was open, I was like stretched, and was it like a washing machine emptying sound? You know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gurgle, 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 yeah, and then that was it. Yes, I had to finish the song and then make me wait to the beer, the the, the, the sable toilet because that's the only one we had toilet all the smokies. Mm -hmm. If you actually went in the yeah. men's toilets, you weren't in a one-piece Elvis suit, were you? Luckily, I wasn't. Because no, uh, if you were, 
That would have been a disaster. <laughs> it would have been a really disaster. Talk about that. My brother Al Cliffy, he won't yes. he, he'll get a shout because he used to wear ch- white chinos. Cliffy? Yeah, my, my older brother Cliffy. Yeah, yeah, he's got a tower named after him in um, Clifford, York. Yeah. Clifford, yeah. 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 Clifford Tower. The Clifford Tower. Mm. And he, he told me the other night out once. <laughs> he had these white chinos. Yeah. <laughs> chinos. And he was in the New white Brighton. And I think he was in the... Uh, I think it was either RJ's or the Chelsea club, yeah, dancing yeah. away. And he, he said, well, he wasn't dancing, he can't leave, he was just to stand there. And he said, oh, he, he knew that he had a fire coming, so he thought, I'll just let her out as he was just walking as through. He's, like, as he's stagger, but, swaggering along, and he just, he just knew straight away when he, it was just shot. mistake, folks. Was, <laughs> <laughs> he let her out. taking him for granted. <laughs> he let her out, and it was in a very squelchy, as he said, and he knew then. <laughs> from there, uh, he had to he had to exit the club. But at the time, like he had pints. No tapping off for him that night. <laughs> Hello, love. <laughs> How and are the, you? And his, <laughs> yeah, his, his pale chinos had come round like a butterfly. Oh God, um, yeah. white chinos and his shards. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go, folks. Yeah, That's why yeah. most people wear dark, dark, dark jeans and whatever. If you wear a white suit, you've got to be really bow free, haven't you? Uh, you've got to be under the age of probably 35 to wear something right. <laughs> yeah, so look, back onto it then. So you're on, you're, in, you're on that festival. How much was you getting? How much money was you getting? I think we got £100 for that, which wasn't expenses. It covered the petrol. Is that all you're interested? So how did you make your money? Or did you just live free like, like that? Like that? So yeah, it was enough money, I suppose. Yeah. It was 1975, 76, though. So, so how much would be equivalent today, like a grand or yeah. a little bit more? No, not that. Uh, probably about four hundred quid. So you got all yeah, I get you. So you all had the PC each and then So what was your daily routine then back then? Did you have a bed or did you did you have many beds or I had different girlfriends, but uh, she didn't go to that festival because there was only just enough room for the equipment and the band. I think the guitarist, Jimmy, because he was married, he was allowed to take his wife Elaine and they went and they slept in the van. We all had to sleep outside on the floor and listen to him having his uh, nuptials <laughs> <laughs> echoing inside the van about five and a half feet away. So I I'm, I'm actually there now, yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, echoing bands. That's crazy. It's so good. What? I mean, look, so you're moving forward, like, did, was it, did you play in the Boo Radleys? Yes, for a while, yeah. The, but they were called the Fourth Man then. Oh, uh, no, they changed the name to the Boo Radleys, yes. So you're a member of the Boo Radleys? Yeah. And what was their most famous song? Was it Good Morning? Something like that. Yeah, it? Wake Up, you Good Wake Morning. Up, it's a beautiful morning. And you, did you, wake Up, it's a beautiful day. Did you drum in that? No, I can't remember who did the drumming on that one. Wake up. So you're Boo Radley's all day with the good lads? Yeah, really yeah. good, yeah. So Local band, very good. Boo Radley's, got a good shout there. Got lots of, of gigs, actually, at different venues. Yeah. Locally, like the Bell. That's yeah. gone now. It used to be a little hotel in New Brighton. Did you ever meet the Beatles, John? Um, no. No? No Beatles. No, I've not any Beatles. No Beatles. Uh, I've got some Beatles stories. Mushy Bennett. Mushy Bennett used to go out yeah. with the uh, go out with Paul McCartney's niece. Um, Mushy. Mushy Bennett and Mushy. If you don't know Mushy, then you don't know. But if you do know Mushy, at one time he, he, he was you know he was going out with Paul McCartney's niece and he got dead friendly with Paul McCartney and uh, yes. now and again he told me stories that he, he'd meet Paul and the funniest one was which I, yeah. I will say is um, he told me he said Paul McCartney Mushy was having a, a, a dinner like he invited Paul him and, him and Paul McCartney's niece for a um, you know a, a nice little get together a little mm. meal in their own household wow. what, what do you call it so Paul sends up, but he didn't, he didn't have a. He didn't no, have a but if you go to these things, you usually bring a bottle, don't you? Like yeah, guests, you know, they, they always bring you something. Oh, but Paul you. never brought nothing. And Mushy said, Come on, Paul, you, you tight bastard. <laughs> yeah, bring a bottle. You, you know, bring it on, bring a bottle. And uh, apparently, uh, apparently. He, took, he took Paul to the offy over in Seacombe, opposite like the Dale. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know it. 
and the woman opened the door and he's coming out and I'm looking what she have that all white and pearls like that. And she went, Hey, hey, you look like Paul McCartney. <laughs> and apparently Paul went, I wish he had his money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the sort of thing he'd say. <laughs> I wish he had his money. Um, and that was it. They just, you know, but most she's, uh, most she's just a lad, Paul Sam. But the funniest one, they were singing the The long and winding road that leads so, to your door. Yeah, apparently Paul was driving the car and, and he put that on. And uh, Mushy was singing, and you know, obviously Paul's like, "Come on, stop ruining it, Mushy," because Mushy got. Oh yeah, he said, "I'm better than you." <laughs> <laughs> I'm better than you, you know. Well, look at that. Good show for Mushy Bennett, Seeker mate. Good but it's supposed to be about you, this isn't it? So we keep on, we keep on going off track. We're absolutely useless. So um, mm-hmm. if you listen to this now, we're twenty minutes in. Twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. So you made the Boo Radleys, you've done enormous things, and you're a good car, uh, car collector, isn't it? You love messing around with cars. Well, and... I used to. I got rid of most of them, yeah. I've got a few left, just for fun. I first met you in Cayley Music. Remember Cayley Music? Yes. Yeah, very good. Yeah, you were like the... Best you, music shop you were on like, the planet. You worked there as a... a you done everything. You fixed everything, speakers and... All sorts and so on. Yeah, that was, well, people always breaking things, so <laughs> it provided good service to help people. And I said to the, uh, is, it, is it Paul, is it, the, 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 the owner, the, the, the tall lad with a, with a bit of a nice, got a good conk on him? <laughs> is that sound? There's you know? two owners, uh, well, yeah, the Stuart and Peter. P- I think it's Peter. Yeah. Peter. Who's yeah. the tallest one? I don't know, both all. Yeah, well, and I said, I said, I, I said, I, I said, uh, oh, I said, hello, my blah, blah. I said, yeah. one of your, uh, used to work here is our drummer now. And he went, is it John? I said, yeah, John Mitch. He went, he's a drummer. That's what he said to me. That's his words. He was a drummer. Me and yeah. Keith Moon. Um, oh, well, I liked Keith Moon, is That sort of I know you mean. drummer where you, you've got something which is madness about you. Yeah, well, you've got to have that to play drums. Otherwise, people go, oh, he's just playing things that he's learnt on YouTube. I don't do that. You just, and, you know, because I enjoy it. <laughs> we on, on one of our tracks, I think we've I learned the, techniques, but yeah, you, you, you've advanced. We went round there, it's yours, and we played. I think it was Sebastian Get the Beer in, yes, yeah, that was made up on the spot, made up on the spot, and it was just your drumming. Uh, and if you listen to it on Spotify, is it on Spotify? Yeah, we're on Spotify, okay. yeah. Spotify, no. Ice Cream Robots. Um, yes, ice cream robots. Sebastian get the beer and ice cream robots. Two albums Sebastian going. Sebastian get the beer. You, you hear a yeah. section of dim, a live dim, gig dim, that we dim, did. Dim, yeah, you hear all the crowd <laughs> shouting and laughing. Come on, yeah. What is it? We want more. Yeah, we want more. Very polite then. <laughs> so, as a rock star, a, a local rock star, yeah, mm-hmm. did you get loads of uh, attention from the? Uh, Female species. No, you've got to be a bass player to get all <laughs> <laughs> The drummers got left out, eh? Yes. Yeah. The singer's usually the main one, but the bass player is a hot second. So yeah. the lads go around the guitars. Like, hey, lad, how do you play that? I mean, you know, to keep keep them away from their girlfriends. <laughs> so these. these Form this physical barrier around them. <laughs> Stay away from it. You. We'll talk about guitar, shall we? So there you go. Yes. Anything else what I can say to you? So now you're, you're semi-retired now, John. Now you have to you say you're semi-retired from, no. um, like... From life. Life itself. No. Yeah. No. No, not at all. No, because you got into property, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah sometimes. Are you look at the pond. I'm looking at the pond, yeah. Yeah, but there's a pond up there. Um, yeah, I'm looking at the pond. Do you know that pond, right? It's actually from the World War Two when the Germans, yeah, dropped the bomb. When they they dropped the bombs, and there's a, there's a pool there. If you, uh, I couldn't like take the thing and not not look at it, but it might do later. It might there's actually a, go. A, if you follow the the ponds, that they follow a big semicircle right across to New Brighton and back over to Liverpool. 
It was the turning circle of a bomber flying away as fast as he could oh. <laughs> before he got shot. And all the AK have... guns were around here, apparently. So what do you want? It's all good. the AK guns would be placed What's in the AK guns? Anti aircraft. Is we an AK Yeah, anti aircraft. Yeah. Yeah. So all these like ponds now, which it's it's funny I mean, because that was just like total like devastation. Now they're like proper like wildlife. Yeah. You know, there's there's also we get like Canadian geese and there. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's loads of more hens. Oh yeah. So if we did starve, if they, I'd be fruitful because you can eat more hens, can't you? Fruitful. No, as in like <laughs> you, yeah, I wouldn't starve. But how no. would you how would you catch a more hen? Uh, with your teeth. <laughs> You have to be quick, you have to lie there. So oh, some camouflage. Yeah, yeah. When they walk along, when they go past you. Because you, if you had a pellet gun, you, you'd damage the meat, wouldn't it? But there'd be a better way. What about the bin lid trap where you put like a bin lid, the old bins, yeah? Yes. With a stick, with the string, string. And in between, you put the seed down. So I'm in the bushes, yeah? Yeah. And I'm just waiting. And then along comes a moorhen and it gets right in the middle and I just knock the stick. And the bin lid comes down. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. The trouble is, that wouldn't happen in reality. The seagulls would just go... <laughs> <laughs> and your friends would be gone. Could you eat seagulls? Yes. We used to eat seagull eggs all the time, ladies and gentlemen. Eggs, Obviously, though? Would you eat a seagull? the main eggs human race ate, and people living on the coast. Seagull eggs. Seagull eggs, yeah. Yeah, of course. Big eggs. Big eggs. I mean, every day down the cliffs, there's millions of seagulls then. There isn't as many. They're just like vain, I don't have to eat anything. Um, not really. If I had to eat, uh, they used to eat just sell- shellfish, but we ate all the fish and got rid of all the cockles, so there's no food for them. So they, they eat what we don't eat. Now. Scavengers, yeah. yeah. Bald seagull flying around the fields of Lawton. Lawton, yeah. Lawton. Oh, by the way. <laughs> An update for everyone. Yeah. You heard it here first. The clock's back. Morton clock is Morton back. Morton clock. Where is, back. is Morton? And it's, dedica- clock? it's dedicated the clock. Yeah. To a lady who was a philanthropist. Can't say it. Philanthropist. A philanthropist. What, yes, a, a, what is a philanthropist? A local person that does good. But it's it's. Uh, oh. She died, I think, in nineteen forty six. I forget when she was born, but it's. The, the date's on the clock, so next time you're driving on a Morton Cross, you can read the exact inscription and then cross into the back of the that's, that's <laughs> secret just boss. Oh. oh, I was looking at the clock. We got a lot of hits, I mean, from Morton Clock, didn't we? Yes, it was a lot. So we will do a new tune about the clock being back. But I drove clock. round it and it said half six and it was like half two, it was half two and it, like midday. No, it says the right time then. Oh, so to fix the clock. They fixed the clock. So if you haven't got a watch, clock. or you didn't know, just walk to Morton. And, uh, yeah, you just walk to Morton. You know, yeah. from Upton, take about 10 minutes. So you'd have to just take mean, 10 like, minutes I mean, off the time. If you want to know the time in Upton, you have to yeah. go to the clock and back. So if you take 20 minutes off, that was the time it was when you thought, what's the time in Upton? I think it's so time you stop to... this. <laughs> <laughs> so you yeah. go to the cross. That was great, yeah. 10 minutes walk, yeah, 10 minutes back. Here you go. Well, it was 20 minutes ago when I thought, what's the time? Because the clock in Upton doesn't work. Oh no, it's terrible. All the chairs, the gold things have been stuck forever. <laughs> well, a fella goes into a shop, doesn't he? And he said, uh, he, he gets his uh, his piece out, his knob, and he says, <clears throat> hey, love, can you fix this? And she went, this is a clock shop, not a cock shop. Yeah. He says, I know, can you put some hands on it? But guys and girls and anyone else who's uh, watching this in the uh, mass universe today, yeah. Uh, yes. Well, Don't forget the ponds the Germans made for us on Fender Fields. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Figure eight, it's called the figure eight, yeah. and that one there is a prime one. Should just rename, should we call that? Uh, we we'll have to call that Lo- uh, Stalag Luft 43, uh, <laughs> Junkers uh, 81. What were the bombs called that what they dropped? Did they have like you, like a mad name? Luft bombing. Luft, that's Luft <laughs> Pond. Bomb, yeah. I don't know. Luft, Luft, Luft Pond. Luft Pond. Luft, yeah. Yeah, we'll have to call it the Luft Pond. The Luft Pond, yeah. And the figure eight would be the. Uh, 
Zwei, sure. eins, zwei, drei, drei, von zwei, sechs, sieben, sieben. Ja, sieben. Acht, no, it's acht. It's a acht Luftpond. Acht, nee. Ach, acht Luftpond. <laughs> so acht. Great. Yeah. Acht Luftpond. Great. That's a good name for it. The acht Luftpond, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. There we go. So, it's a... Uh, what time have I got? I've got to get smokies. It's pressing on, John. I hope you're all Joel, John, Mitch, and um, look forward to more of these videos because um, there's there's a lot of knowledge in your head, uh, if that makes any sense. <laughs> Take care. I hope you do uh, like, subscribe, or whatever. Or, But either way, it's John, Mitch, and he's living. He's here in person. Um, um, Joel. Yeah.